Hello everybody and welcome to my wrap up video for the month of June. So I had a pretty good reading month this, this month. I read... I read nine books which for me is pretty decent. I usually only average about three or four so that was pretty good. Um, I'm on my summer holidays from university so I've got off time to myself. And a lot of stuff has actually happened this month. So to start with we've got our title and cover reveal for the sequel to The Infinity Course by Kenny Don Bowman. It's going to be called The Genesis Wars, which I think is the coolest title ever, and the cover looks like this, so beautiful, amazing. The synopsis sounds great as well. If you haven't read The Infinity Course, it's fantastic. It's a um, science fiction fantasy book about a girl who dies, ends up in the afterlife, and finds out that it's been taken over by a sentient AI, and she gets them caught up in the war that's going on then between the AI consciousness and the humans. It's brilliant, it's going to start start of a trilogy, it's this author's first foray into fantasy and I cannot wait for the sequel. It comes out next April, I believe. And the second book that I, I found out was got a title and a cover is the eighth book in the Invisible Library series. It's going to be called The Untold Story and this is the cover and this is a book series that I just absolutely love. It's about a sort of interdimensional library and you follow a librarian who basically acts as a spy and goes out to different alternative worlds to bring back books to the library in order to help stabilise these worlds and their connection to the library. And it's just a, such a nuts series, it's so weird and the world building's fantastic, it's got absolutely everything and stuff's really been kicking off in the last couple of books, you know, you're sort of finding out the history of the library and the history of the dragons and stuff and I think, I think this is possibly the last book I hope not because I just want to have so much more in this world so I cannot wait till this comes out in December. Uh, we also got the Shadow and Bone series 2 announcement which is very exciting. I really enjoyed series 1. I think it's one of the best book adaptations in recent years. You know, it's not perfect but it is one of the best ones that we've had recently from the costuming to the plot to the, the fantastic cast. I cannot wait to see more of this show and hopefully with the series 2 announcement we'll get the ball rolling, more people will watch it and we'll hopefully get, you know, several series of this show. So yeah, but onto the books now that I've been reading. So the first book that I read was We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. This is a reread for me because I was, I had finally gotten a copy of We Free the Stars so I wanted to just remind myself of what was going on. This is a story about a girl who um, dresses up as a man to be a hunter for her village because her particular sort of region of the country she lives in is very patriarchal and very sexist um, and she gets sent on a quest to uh, this forbidden island um, to basically restore magic to the world and she ends up having to team up with the Prince of Death who, you know, is her enemy, he, he's an assassin, she, he's, he's probably there to kill her and as, as well as just some other characters that just sort of form up and they all end up having to team up one way or another. Uh, it's a really brilliant book and I highly enjoyed it, especially on a reread. I think I read it in about a day or two. It's just so much fun and there's a really great enemies to lovers romance. And then because I was reading We Hunt the Flame, I followed it immediately with We Free the Stars. This was such a good sequel, such an amazing conclusion to the duology. I absolutely loved everything that happened in here. The continuation of the romance was amazing. Zafira's character just grew and I loved sort of her having to battle with some of the stuff that has happened at the end of the book, at the end of the first book, and then all the stuff you see here, as well as dealing with the guilt of what did kind of happen at the end of the last book, and yeah, really fantastic seeing this, seeing this uh, story come to its conclusion, and it was just really brilliant. I then read The Marks Left on Her by D. Lebowitz. This is a fictionalised memoir about a survivor of sexual assault, as well as just a sort of you know, just, just a story of her life uh, about being a mixed race girl in Hong Kong and how she's moved from Hong Kong to Paris with her mother. Um, her father's completely absent from her life and just, it's just going through the story of, you know, how she grew up and how she survived all these different situations and it was very heavily inspired by the Me Too movement and you can definitely understand that in the way that it comments on all the men in her life that have really used her and abused her and you know, taking advantage and how she survived that, how she's grown from that and it's really just, it's a really great memoir. Um, trigger warnings for just about everything, sexual assault on page, abuse on page, uh, drug misuse and drug use and misuse, um, 
self-harm on page, and that's described in detail, a suicide attempt, body horror, there's a lot that goes on, but it's a really, just a fantastic story of a survivor, and it's it's told in a way, as I said, it's a sort of, sort of fictionalised memoir, so you're not really, you know, it's not in first person, it's in third person, and it follows just the girl. She's never given a name, she's just known as the girl or the woman, and I just think that's such an interesting idea, because obviously this is a story that could apply to just about anyone, you know, Every single woman you know has got their own story of a man that has made her feel unsafe, who has singled her out for being a woman and just made her feel unsafe because of it. You know, and there's so many different, you know, this could be anybody's story um, because it's just unfortunately so common and I think that was really just quite prevalent and I think the, you know, and the idea of calling her the girl as well, I think it helps the author distance herself from the stuff that happens because obviously this is really heavy stuff but and obviously talk, you know, going back over your own traumas and writing it down, obviously I think that was one of the reasons why she did that, but I also then really appreciated the fact that she did do it in a way that a lot of people could connect to it and could almost, you know, compare it to their own story. I'll leave some links as well to some interviews that she's done because I find this book in a really weird way. First of all, um, it's published by Onry Publishing, which is a black-led publishing house set based down in London that aims to uplift and publish voices of people of colour who perhaps get overlooked, who perhaps more commonly will get overlooked in traditional publishing. And so far everything they've published has been fantastic. They've published Daughters of Henry and um, the sequel to that, Descendants of the First, is coming out in October, I believe. They published this, they published The Dream Country, which is a really great book, as well as Landfill Mountains, which is coming out early, later this year, which sounds absolutely fantastic. So I'll leave a link to their website. And uh, yeah, as I said, I sort of found it through them as well as because the author just started following me on Instagram and I felt I should probably go check out her book and it sounded amazing. So I thought, yeah, I'll read it. So yeah, it's a really great book. And I definitely also recommend just watching some of the interviews of the author talking about why she wrote this book. And just, yeah, she's a really interesting person to hear, to hear speak. And this is just such a fantastic story of survival. I also then, I then read Good Girl Bad Blood, which is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. In the first book you follow Pip as she gets caught up trying to solve the um, murder of this one girl who everyone believed was killed by her boyfriend, but after a run-in with her, with the boyfriend's um, brother, she sort of comes to the conclusion that actually a lot of pe you know, he's sort of like, you know, he would never do that, I don't understand why everyone just believed that. I think he was killed too. So she just ends up getting caught up in the story of who really killed this girl and did this boy really commit suicide or was he killed as well? And it's just such a fantastic murder mystery story, YA, and the sequel is brilliant. I absolutely loved it. Um, the third book's coming out later this year. I'm so excited to see where that goes. I think one thing that I really love about this, both these books so far, is how technology and social media and things play a part in what's been going on as well you know play a part in the murders up to a point as well as play a huge part in how Pip finds all her evidence and is able to put together a timeline and a story of what happened in order to help herself work help work out what's what's gone on and who's killed who sort of thing um it's just a really interesting idea and I believe the third book is actually going to be centering around somebody stalking Pip via via social media because of sort of the fame that has kind of come with solving the murder in the first book as well as then so solving the disappearance that goes on in this book because by this book she's got a sort of podcast and you know that's that sort of got a bit of a social online social media online following and I think that's just a really interesting theme to weave into this book series and I'm very interested to see what the third book's going to be like. The next book was The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. This is the second book following The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, set in the sort of 1700s, and the first book follows Monty, and who is a bisexual man who, um, after, leaving, after finishing school, goes on his grand tour with his best friend and his sister, and he may or may not be a little in love with his best friend Percy. So, and shenanigans ensue, it's a very fun series, and this book then follows his sister Felicity, who wants to go to medical school, but obviously is finding that to be quite difficult considering she's a woman, and none of them will really let her in. So she ends up going to Germany to try and find this doctor who might might take her on, because she's discovered that he's marrying her best, her old childhood friend. And it's just such a lovely story of sort of like female friendship, and she's such a I'm not like other girls, and she gets called out on it so much, and I love it. And, you know, there's pirates, and 
she's she's sort of uh, coming to terms with the fact that she's asexual in a time where women really weren't allowed to be something like that, which I really enjoyed seeing. And yeah, and especially this is this, this segment. There, yeah. there's this segment at the back where the author goes through all these different women uh, throughout history that have perhaps been erased or you know, their impact has been sort of talked down a bit purely for the fact that they're women and obviously they very much inspired, you know, the characters in here as well as some of the stuff they go through. And I really enjoyed just that last section. I mean, I enjoyed the whole book, but I loved that last section where she actually takes the time to point out all these different women from history and the impact that they had in their respective fields. Really, really great book. I believe there's probably going to be a third book at least, and I really hope there is because I love this series. It's so much fun. It's just, yeah, it's just really great fun. I absolutely love it. Next book I read was Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard. Now, if you've watched any of my recent videos, you'll know that this is my favourite book series and I have been so excited for Witch Shadow. I managed to get an early copy of it about five or six days before it was due, due to be released in the UK, just because Watchers just had it on their shelves. And it was amazing. It totally lived up to the hype. Um, this series follows, it's set in a sort of fantasy world where you have different witches. Um, they can be earth, air, water, fire, ether or void and you start off following these two witches who are Safi and Isult and Safi is a type of ether witch called a truth witch so she can tell truth from a lie and Isult is another type of witch called a thread witch and she can see the invisible threads and things that are attached to everybody that show their emotions and as well their connections to other people. And I'm set in this world where there's been a 20 year truce between um, all the different la countries and you're in the 19th year of the 20 year truce so obviously things are really starting to get quite tense and if anyone were to find out that Safi was a truth witch they would all want to try and get their hands on her because in this huge big political mess if you could have a witch who can tell you who's lying to you they would kill to get that availability and yeah everything really kicks off from there so much happens this is the fourth slash fifth book in the series as sort of a novella that really shouldn't be skipped but it's brilliant, um, it's such a good series, it sort of really follows Azult as well because every book kind of follows a main, one of the sort of four main characters, this is Azult's book and her arc was just fantastic, it's the second last in the series, so much goes down and I just absolutely loved it but I've got a whole, I've got a whole load of uh, videos about the Witchlands including a spoiler free discussion of the series and why I love it as well as a spoiler free review for Witch Shadow so if you want to go check those out I'll leave a link to those on the screen but yeah um, 4.55 out of 5 sort of thing, you know, absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait for the last book in this series because it's just amazing. Next book I read was Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Farseer trilogy following the bastard son of the King in Waiting. Um, or oh well, previous King in Waiting because he then does abdicate in the first book quite early on, that's not when you yeah, spoiler, who then gets trained and the, the son gets trained as an assassin to the king, for, for the king. Um, really, really a great book series. This is the second book and I absolutely loved it. Just following Fitz as he grows up and then as he continues sort of becoming, you know, from in this book it's very much going from like teenager to man sort of time and coming to terms with the sort of different magics that he has as well as his sort of, you know, after the events at the end of Assassin's Apprentice, you know, he's been through quite a lot. He's recovering from that as well as just trying to navigate all the sort of shady shit that's going on in the keep and there's one guy that's really out to get both him and the king that he serves. Really I loved this book so much, it was just so 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 good. I didn't like the plotline revolving Molly, his sort of childhood sweetheart, she kind of comes back into this book and I just felt it was just, it had no point to it apart from just, it really felt like such a side plot and really could have done without it. Um, I didn't like Molly's character, I thought she was just a complete pain, I thought Fitz's opinion of her was a pain, I thought his sort of attachment and he felt really whingy, which you know really reminds you that he's a 15 year old boy because oh boy does he behave like one. Yeah, I just wasn't here for it at all. If she comes back in the third book I'll be kind of pissed off but I hope they have a really good reason for doing it. But yeah, um, but still, still love this book so much though, like it was really good, I cannot wait to finish the trilogy. And then read Ink in the Blood which is a set in a fantasy world where you follow these two girls who are something called Inklings because in this book uh, their religion is based off of tattoos and the goddess speaks to people through tattoos and the people in the temple are given missives with messages for the followers and they have the ability to ink a tattoo onto themselves and then send it to other people 
they're called Inklings, so you follow Anya and Cecilia, who are Inklings, who have completely lost their faith, they don't believe that the, that the Goddess Divine is real, and they think the Temple is just using the Inklings and things to keep their following and to manipulate people, and they don't like their part in playing in that, so they try to escape, and they escape with a travelling group of people called the Rabble Mob, and who are basically sort of like, not quite a circus, but they do very elaborate plays and things, and yeah, and everything kind of kicks off from there. They find out that perhaps the goddess that they didn't believe really is real, and she's coming after them, because she's displeased with them, and everything kind of kicks off from there. I did do a spoiler-free review for this book, for this book, so definitely go check that out. I perhaps explain things a little bit better. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I thought the idea of using tattoos as a religion and as a communication sort of method was really interesting. I loved our two main characters, Cecilia and Anya. There's a really interesting sort of element to the world building of called tenors, which is where a sort of colour surrounds people and from that you can tell their pronouns and their gender identity. So therefore the idea of gender identity is very fluid and there's loads of characters that use they them pronouns or switch between she or they or he and it's just a really interesting idea to sort of build in and there's several LGBTQ plus characters, you know, our main, one of the main characters, Cecilia, is either bi bisexual or pansexual um, and often comments that she believes she, her tenor will move between she and they a lot of the time so that was really interesting as well as a sort of older lesbian couple towards the end as well which I really like seeing, I love seeing um, LGBTQ couples who are perhaps a bit older, you know, it's proof that you know you can you can grow up and find the love of your life. And, and yeah, it was just a really good book. Not amazing, but you know, between three and four stars. And for me, you know, four stars is, oh, wow, I really loved that. Five stars is amazing. And three stars is a bit sort of, eh, I didn't hate it, but also I'm not going to be raving about it. So this is like between a three and a four. I did really, really enjoy this and I'm definitely going to be continuing the series. I read The Travelling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arakawa. This is a book that my sister bought me a couple of years ago and I've been putting it off for ages because I knew I was going to cry at it. And I did. Um, it's such a lovely story. It's about this man who takes in this stray cat after it was in an accident and needs to be looked after. And the cat then ends up staying with him until the man suddenly has to rehome him. And we don't really know why. And it's just the story of them travelling up and down the country, up and up and down Japan, trying to rehome him with three of his old childhood best friends. And you see things from the cat's perspective, which I absolutely love. It's absolutely hilarious getting the cat's point of view in his inner monologue as well as things from the point of view of the friends that we go to visit and you see sort of through flashbacks how they know this guy and what their friendship was like and just really it's a really interesting idea and it's just so gentle and the cat sort of really ends up love travelling up and down the country with Satoru and it's just a lovely book. I have got a spoiler free review um, for this, it should be out by now so I'll link it. It's really great, um, as I said I cried and I just absolutely love it. It's just such a lovely, lovely book. And finally, I read All Our Hidden Gifts, which is a YA story about a girl who finds this set of tarot cards in her school and gets quite into sort of, you know, doing tarot readings for all the girls in her school. And then one day she does one for her old best friend, who she's had a huge falling out with. And this card that she's never seen before called the Housekeeper card turns up. And then the next day, her the girl that she did the reading for doesn't turn up to school and is missing and she believes that perhaps the housekeeper card had something to do with it. This was such a good book, like it's really witchy and you go definitely go into the idea of tarot and how it can be used for divination but it can also just be used to analyse what's going on in your life currently, um, which I believe is something to do, is perhaps more what tarot is about. I don't actually know that much about it, I've got a friend who does a bit of tarot and she sort of set, seemed to say the same things. Because um, I've been listening to the Raven Cycle last month and they do a lot of things to do with like tarot and fortune telling and stuff so when I saw this book I was like yeah I'm kind of in the mood to sort of read stuff like that and it was just really really good you've got sort of got three main characters you've got Maeve who is our main character and then her friend Fiona who she sort of almost sets up a sort of you know Fiona charges people money for Maeve to do tarot readings and then they split the cost between the two of them sort of thing and their friendship kind of forms from that and then there's also Ro who is the girl who goes missing, Lily, um, he's her brother, and the three of them sort of all get tied up in sort of trying to use magic and things to actually get Lily back from the housekeeper. And yeah, it's set in Ireland and um, definitely goes into the idea of sort of 
gender identity and sexuality within the context of, of Ireland and perhaps how there are still some sects there because it is quite a religious country I believe that you know still even in modern times are really against homosexuality. Um, trigger warnings for there is a scene where there's violence and hate crimes against LGBTQ plus people so I will just give you a bit of a warning for that that does happen in the book and Rose a really interesting character who is exploring his gender identity and is an openly bisexual character and and I like and May and uh, Maeve's friend Fiona is a Filipino girl and I think one thing that's really interestingly brought in is how ignorant Maeve is to you know the racist sort of things that Fiona will have to deal with the the you know the hate crimes and LGBT the sort of hate on LGBTQ plus people that her gay sister and then also Ro have to deal with on a daily basis, and she gets called out on her ignorance and making other people's oppression all about herself so many times. Like she's not a likable main character, but I like that about her. I like that she's got you know I believe this is to be a series and I believe she's going to go through such a huge change of not being the sort of selfish narcissistic ignorant person that she really is in this book through her friendship with Fiona and through her sort of you know blooming romance with Ro and really trying to understand that she you know she was really horrible to Lily she was you know really sort of using other people for her own gain she's really quite a selfish character and she does get called out on this m multiple times which I really like to see because she's you know she's a cis white straight girl from a quite well-off family and it just never occurs to her that she's, you know, that other people have to sort of go through, you know, things that like Ro and Fiona have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So it was interest interesting sort of themes woven into that sort of idea as well as then all the sort of witchy stuff and the tarot and the magic. So it was a really, really interesting book I think. Um, yeah, so as I said she's really not a likeable main character but I liked her and I liked I loved Fiona and I really loved Ro and I did actually quite like Rose and Maeve's romance even though I thought it was a bit fast. Like she sort of goes from having no opinion of him to having a crush on him to you know pursuing him and sort of thing all within about two chapters. Um, but to be honest I wasn't really that fast, it was like yeah it was alright. So yeah, um, I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm definitely interested in reading more of this if it is going to be a series and hopefully uh, Maeve will become a better person. Whew, we got to the end of it. Those are all the books that I read in June. As I said, I read quite a few. I think that was about nine or so. And I really, really enjoyed all of them. There wasn't a single dud in there, which we love to see. But yeah, so let me know what you've been reading this month. Have you read any of these books? Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinion. And yeah, um, feel free to check out some of the other videos that I mentioned this in this video. I'll leave them linked as well as links to all my publishing down below in the description and I think you know that is definitely something really good to support. So far all their books have been absolutely fantastic. They clearly know what they're doing. Like all their books have been amazing so far. Um, I can't wait till Landfall Mountains comes out. I can't wait till the sequel to Daughters of Henry is out and I really just can't recommend all the stuff that they publish enough. But thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.